Simmons. No timeouts. You gotta go. Williams, three. Yes! He finally gets it to Brian. Brian dribbling. Has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! Hey guys, this is a quick sports update. This is your host, Francesca, and you're listening to a podcast about March Madness. So for those of you who don't know what March Madness is, it's a tournament that includes championships from 32 Division I conferences and 36 teams which are awarded at large berths. The 68 teams who will compete are divided into four regions and organized into a single elimination bracket, which predetermines when a team wins a game and which team it will face next. The tournament occurs during the course of three weekends in March at pre-selected neutral sites across the United States. Teams seeded by rank proceed through a single game elimination bracket. The first round consists of 64 teams playing in 32 games over the course of a week. The Sweet 16 and the Elite 8 rounds occur the following week and weekend. The Final Four is usually played during the first weekend of April. Those four teams, one from each region, East, South, Midwest, and West, compete in a pre-selected location for the National Championship. Believe it or not, March Madness was actually created in 1939 by the National Association of Basketball Coaches, and the tournament was actually the idea of the Ohio State University coach, Harold Olson. This tournament has become one of the most famous annual sporting events in the United States. You can find many people having similar conversations about the tournament within the month of March. Some conversations one might encounter are people asking each other who's in their final four, who they have winning the entire thing, or if they are able to watch previous night's games or even who they think will win in the next round of games. But most conversations people talk about are the upsets, and yes, there happen to be many. This year, a lot of people thought that University of Virginia was going to go far in the tournament, and some people, yes, me being one of them, had them winning the whole thing. In the final four this year was Michigan, who overcame Loyola, University of Chicago, 69-57, and Villanova, who beat Kansas, 95-79. to And so, in the national championship in San Antonio, Texas, was Michigan and Villanova. Villanova took the W, 79-62. to So... I was curious myself and met with a few of my friends after the tournament ended to get their feedback on this year's madness. Okay, Mark, so how did you pick your bracket? Well, Fran, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't know much about college basketball, so when I was picking my bracket, I really just looked at the one seeds and thought that they would go pretty far. Um, And I also picked the teams that had cool jerseys. Um, that guy, um, but I ended up doing pretty well. I got in the 94th percentile, so I can't say okay. uh, can't say my methods don't work. All right, um, who, did you make more than one bracket? I did. I made three brackets. Um, in the other ones, I had Duke winning, and I only was about like in the 40th percentile. But in this one, I had Nova winning, so that boosted my points a little bit. All right. And with any of these brackets, did you bet with a group of people? No, no. They were normally just for fun. Since I don't really know much about college basketball, I didn't want to put any money on it. But it's a good time, and uh, I had some fun. And then who did you have in your final four? I had UVA, UNC, Nova, and Kansas. So I got the Nova-Kansas game right, which I was pretty pumped about. And then I picked Nova to win. Um, But... Unfortunately, I didn't pick Loyola Chicago or Michigan, so that kind of brought me down, but I'm happy with the end result. All right, good. Thanks. Okay, so Jade, um, first I want to know if you even watch college basketball throughout the season or just within the tournament. Um, I just watch during the tournament because that's when it's the most exciting. Agreed. <laughs> Um, when was the first time that you filled out a bracket? Um, the first time that I filled out a bracket was my senior year of high school. Okay, so that was last year. So did you do better this year than you did last year? Yes, I did a lot better this year. Right, okay. Um, did you make more than one bracket? I did, I had three brackets. Three, all right. So the bracket that you did the best in, who did you have in your final four? Um, my best bracket, I had UNC, Virginia, Duke, and Villanova. Okay. 
Um, who was in your championship? Um, UNC and Villanova. Okay, so you had the winner in there. Mm -hmm. um, who did you have winning? I had Villanova. Oh, okay. Um, how about your biggest upset within that bracket? My biggest upset, just like everybody else pretty much in the whole country, was um, UMBC beating Virginia, which was a number 16 over a number one, which was the first time in men's basketball history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that game gave me anxiety, but whatever. Um, so I stopped watching after that, basically, because that's who I had going the whole entire time. Um, do you stop watching the tournament when your teams are losing? Um, I don't because I always like to root for the underdog, so I like watching low seed teams win. Okay. Um, is Villanova like your favorite team or you have another team that you wished went further? Um, I really like UNC, but I've always been a Villanova fan as well. Okay. Um, what was your final percentage in the bracket? Um, I had a 93%. I'm not oh really sure how. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I had 38, so, um, probably like 19 million in the country, but yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Okay, Ari, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your experience with March Madness. Um, so, first of all, do you watch college basketball throughout the season or just throughout the tournament? I don't usually watch college basketball through the season. I honestly kind of find it boring, so I only really watch the tournament. Okay. Um, when was the first time that you filled out a bracket? The first time I filled out a bracket was uh, in middle school. I used to do it with a bunch of kids that I went to school with, and we did it through high school too, but when we got to college, it kind of fell apart. Right. Um, so, how did you do this year compared to previous years? Uh, well, I actually was in a very low percentile this year. Uh, last year was probably my best year. Um, this year, not so much. Hmm. Did you make more than one at least? <laughs> I did make multiple brackets. I think I actually had three. Okay. Um, were you part of a group this year or no? I was not part of a group, but my family kind of has one, but nothing really results from it. And you know? no money or anything? No, nothing like that. Um, so, I guess the biggest question that everyone asks each other, um, who was in your final four? My final four was UVA, Xavier, Villanova, and Duke. Uh, unfortunately, UVA, Duke, and Xavier uh, kind of messed me up. Uh -huh. I'd say so. <laughs> messed me up as well. Yeah. Um, so, your championship, who'd you have? I had Villanova winning the bra this bracket, but I had two other brackets, one with Duke and one with UVA. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really want Villanova to win at all, but I figured me might as well... Stick them in there. Didn't want Philly winning two things, but whatever. No thanks. Um, no so then I assume your biggest upset would have been the UVA um, e game yes, against it was. UMBC. Yes. It was. Um. So I stopped watching when they lost, and my other teams that I picked, who were in my final four, um, did you stop watching the tournament? I actually did. I actually even stopped watching certain games because they kind of got under my skin, and I just didn't have the patience to really watch. And suffer through the losses. Yeah. Um. So your final percentage was fifty-two percent. All the better than mine. It was thirty-four. So you're winning something. Um. So did you actually have a team though that's like your number one for all sports and didn't go as far as you would? I have them to say too? I really favor Duke just uh, because of my past with Duke and family members that have been there. So uh, I really want to see them do well, but unfortunately. Another upset. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for taking your time to answer questions. Of course. As one can tell, this tournament always has people on the edge of their chairs. Some people, as a matter of fact, have a lot of money at stake if they do well. My brother, for example, won $200 for having a good bracket. Now, he's only in high school, so I'm sure adults who bet on these t games have a lot more at stake. It's a long month of anticipating wins and losses. For example, so many people had University of Virginia going so far in the tournament but were eliminated in the first round by University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Another scenario many people did not see coming was Loyola Chicago beating University of Miami in the first round. Chicago even more surprisingly made their way to the Final Four this year, but unfortunately their Cinderella story was ended by Michigan. 
The top 10 teams this year predicted by Sports Illustrated were Villanova, Duke, Virginia, Michigan, Cincinnati, Xavier, Purdue, Kansas, Michigan State, and North Carolina. Interestingly enough, three of those teams, Kansas, Michigan, and Villanova, actually made it to the Final Four. But unfortunately, Villanova won this year, and they won two years ago. So the tradition in this tournament is taking down the net, and Jay Wright and his team were able to do it yet again. Philadelphia had a big year this year, and I was so jealous of my friend at Villanova who was able to experience all of this. Her classes were canceled the next day, and she had a huge parade, and I definitely wish that I could have been there for that. Yeah. So March Madness is truly a surprise, and you are almost better off guessing than putting in the time to predict games. The tournament is also always filled with so many emotions, with seniors playing in their last ever college basketball game or even those who plan on entering the NBA, it becomes quite bittersweet for them. But overall, it is always exciting watching an underdog upset a highly ranked team, get antsy watching overtimes, or the thrill of the occasional buzzer beaters. It is truly an exciting tournament to be a part of. Now that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in to a quick sports update. I'm your host, Francesca, and I'll catch you next time. What's the move? Can I tell the truth? If I was doing this for you, then I have nothing left to prove. Nah, this for me. So, did you do March Madness this year? Uh, nah, I don't really partake in such American activities.